Joining us now live in studio, we have Senator John Tester. Thank you so much for coming in this morning. Great to be here. Yeah, we appreciate it. Um, there's a lot of eyes on Congress right now. We're watching for the House to put in place a new speaker. The government's only funded for a few more weeks. Some big funding bills like we were just talking about that need to be passed this year include the Farm Bill. Are you concerned about Congress having enough time to get this work done? Well, look, there's a lot of things going on in the world right now that we have to address, and we have to get a Farm Bill done, the appropriations bills done. Look, there's enough time. We might have to stay there some weekends. That's fine. Uh, the dysfunctionality in the House kind of raises heck with everything because we don't know what's going to happen in the Speaker. Uh, they're going to get a Speaker at some time, but but really they're kind of floating in the water without without getting a Speaker. So we've got the time to do it. It's going to be hard, uh, but the truth is, is that uh, if we can come together in a bipartisan way, we can get a lot of good work done in the next uh, 21 days or so before the budget runs out. And, uh, and move forward with the Farm Bill and the FAA Bill and, and uh, the supplemental bill for Israel and Ukraine and border funding and all that stuff. So I look forward to rolling up my sleeves and getting after it. Okay. And you voice support for Israel's right to defend itself after Hamas, of course, we've been following this, killed about 1,400 people over a week ago now, and there's rising tension in the region. It is um, a big story to follow. President Biden requested, you said just this morning, a big aid package, almost $100 billion for support Ukraine and Israel. What do you expect to see happen in Congress with this? It's a very timely ask, and with the dysfunction that you're seeing, there's a concern about it happening. So I can tell you in the Senate what we're doing right now is we're, with my staff is working uh, with me and, and the White House and the Department of Defense to draft up a bill that meets the needs for Israel, Ukraine. Um, that will hopefully be done by the first part of next week. And then we can present it out to uh, not only the Appropriations Committee, but the entire Senate. They can take a look at it. Uh, and then hopefully we can take it to the floor. And uh, if there's some amendments that need to be done, we can do that and get the thing passed and over to the House. Once it gets to the House, with the dysfunction that's going on there, I can't tell you what transpires then. But the truth is the Senate needs to do their job, get it out the Senate floor, get it over to the House, and, uh, and move from there. Okay. And uh, the IDF response against Hamas in Gaza, of course, has destroyed large parts of that region mm -hmm. of the world. The United Nations are warning of a humanitarian catastrophe. Uh, catastrophe. Of course, war is very ugly. Do you support humanitarian aid for Palestine as well? And what do you think is going to become of the Palestinian people? Yeah, so I, I think it's an absolute necessity. I mean, you don't want uh, people starving to death or dying of, of thirst, which is basically they don't have food, they don't have medical supplies, they don't have water. Um, so th there needs to be some help for them. It doesn't all need to be on the United States' shoulders. There needs need to be other, pe other countries pitching in for it. Uh, but that's, that's very, very important uh, moving forward as a civilized world. Um, and so uh, I anticipate that will be part of the supplemental package that, that we push out through the Senate. Um, and, um, you know, and, and we'll just see what kind of size it is and we'll make sure that it's used for all the, all the things it needs to be used for, which is supplies, water, food, medicine. Okay. And uh, shifting subjects a little bit, you're working on some new ideas to improve the military to civilian life transition. Talk to us a little bit about that. So we just had a joint hearing with the Senate Armed Services Committee, we being the Veterans, uh, Veterans Committee in the Senate. And uh, we, were, we were able to have a really good hearing uh, bringing folks from the military and the VA together. The transition time that is held when, a, when we take a, a, a warrior, a fighting man or woman and convert them back to civilian life isn't long enough. Um, they're, they're not doing a really good job of the transition, let's just put it that way. And we're ending up with folks coming out uh, where they've been told what to do um, and have a mission mm -hmm. coming out, you know, and, and uh, they're having a tough time uh, mm -hmm. in civilian life. Uh, I think it contributes to mental health issues. I think it contributes to financial problems uh, and family problems. And I think if we work to do a better job on the military side and we get those folks enrolled in the VA as much as possible. Now they don't have to be a part of it if they don't want to, but get them enrolled so they know the benefits that are there. I think it'll end up with good results as far as the, especially the mental health side of things. Okay, Senator Tester, thank you for being here. I've been following your farming adventures this summer on Instagram. How'd your season go? That was good. It was a heck good? of a lot better than last year, the year before, and if hopefully it's we'll get some rain. moisture this winter and we'll be able to do it again. Okay, all right, and you're headed back to D.C. now. Yeah, well, yeah, first part of the week. We'll go back Monday and, and then, uh, like I said, roll up sleeve supplemental will be job one. Okay, well, thank you so much for coming here. Travel safe. We'll be back right after this. You bet.